Gosh. Okay. This should have plenty of time. It's not very long. Um, let's see. So, um, you can go and talk about something about DFT plus DMFT. So before I actually talk about that, I have a quick review on what is DMFT and what is DFT and why we want to do the DFT plus DMFT. Um, so this is a very bird eye summary of the DMFT. So what the DMFT trying to do, basically try to map a lattice problem to an impurity problem uh, and try to solve the impurity problem instead of the whole lattice problem because we don't have the uh, capability to solve the lattice problem most of the time. Um, and those are pretty much the equation, all the equation you need for a DMFT. So roughly speaking, you have a lattice here. This is a five by five lattice. Of course, in reality, there's an infinite lattice and you pick one of the side infinite lattice you define a bath green function uh, given by G script here. And with the bath green function, you can solve the impurity problem. What the impurity problem is, the simplest you can imagine, it just, I have a local Hubble interaction. In general, it could be more complicated. When you have part of DFT plus DMFT, it's usually a multi-orbital case. And not only have a local cooler interaction, it may also have an exchange coupling. But this is the simple example, which only have a local interaction U. Um, so you solve the impurity problem with the bath green function given by G script here and a lo local interaction U. You get the impurity green function, which I denote here as G impurity. So when you get the G impurity, uh, you can get the self energy of the impurity. Self energy impurity given simply given by the Dyson equation. Uh, so you get the self energy by the inverse of the impure uh, of the bath green function minus the inverse of the impurity green functions. When you get the self energy, then the key assumption of the DMFT is the self energy of impurity problem is the same as the self energy of the lattice problem. So with the self energy of the impurity, that means you have self energy of the lattice, you can use the relation to calculate the self energy, of the green function of the lattice. So you calculate the green function of the lattice. When you get the green function of the lattice, you can get back to the, to the first equation here to get the bar function. And then you repeat this procedure until the self energy conversion. That's basically the way of the DMFT. Um, question? No. Okay. So, um, of course, you can generalize it a bit. Uh, instead of consider a single side, you can consider a multiple side. Uh, basically, all the equations are the same, but they now carry the uh, momentum index for the dynamical cluster approximation. Of course, you have other formulation of the cluster theory. The other popular one is the Cellular DMFT. Now, for the dynamic cluster approximation, what I do is try to cross screen the Bion zone to many points, and each point is represented by the capital letter K here. Um, so, all the equations carry the K index. You have the same you, uh, equation for the bath green function. You fit it into impurity solver. The impurity solver will solve the problem with the bath green function in action. And the impurity solver gives you the impurity green function. Same thing, you calculate the impurity self energy. And you assume the impurity self energy the same as the lattice self energy. You get the lattice green function. With the lattice green function, you're going back to calculate the bath green function. And this cycle repeat until the self energy converge. Um, yeah, this, uh, coming, uh, this is the simple generalization of the DMFT. Uh, coming, I have an yes. impression that uh, in DMFT, this uh, impurity solver yes. seems like uh, it's quite compute intensive. Uh, well, why it's so difficult to to solve? Because in the, in the, in a framework of multiple scattering, uh, well, problem, it's easy. <laughs> problem, it's not, uh, we have a uh, in in the language of a tau matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't want exactly the. 
Yeah, I didn't wait exactly the M. Only here, the difference is in the KKR problem, the impurity is a, a scattering potential. But the impurity problem I'm talking about here is actually the interaction and you decide. So it's a real interacting many body problem. It's not a single body set scattering problem. <coughs> so in the KKR, okay. because you are solving the consumption equation. Why the impurity is always a, a potential scattering. Okay. But here the impurity, the hamiltonian of the impurity will be this hamiltonian, but it's will by the green functions, roughly speaking. Mm -hmm. And also okay. the Dyson and equation uh, regarding the impurity is non perturbative nature in reality. So, so by various approximation of impurity, we truncate somewhere. So that's why it's really hard. Well, of course, there are many ways to solve the impurity problem, but yeah. The, yeah. the difference between the KQ impurity problem and the DMFT impurity problem is the DMFT impurity problem yes. is a many body problem in the Anderson yeah. impurity. So if, if you want to just look, look at, at this, if you want to uh, solve it exactly, you'll see that uh, you, um, the effort actually grows uh, exponentially with the number of sides. Yeah, exactly. Yes. For the exact solution. So uh, yeah, let's say you want to solve the exact diagonalization. Uh, you do, don't use any symmetry. That would be four to the power of n, where n is number of a lattice side. So he's actually solving the lattice problem. Well, worse than that, because you have a dynamical buff, but it is computational intensive. So what is the status of the coming? I mean, the, I know that there is CTQMC for couple, up to maybe five orbitals, but if yeah, you have- Yeah, well, maybe seven. The larger number I see is seven, seven orbital. Of course, you you, you mm -hmm. need to do all kind of check there in order to get seven uh -huh. orbital solutions. But I've seen that you people can... like like Meyer and others, they have uh, very large clusters in DCA, uh, like with 90 atoms or something. I don't know. How-, how Yeah, so, for, for the problem- Yeah, for the problem- so for the problem with that sign problem, with the minus side problem, let's say you do the half field, the half model, uh, uh, you can go to rather large letters like 90, 90 uh, side, something uh, like that. But for the interesting problem, let's say you want to do the dope the half model, uh, you pretty much limit to maybe 16 side or beta and beta over T is roughly maybe 10 to a one. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean the hopping we, uh, over the the temperature is roughly about hundred, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So, of course, I mean they're all kind of method which solve this problem from the live if Hubble one approximation to all the way quantum computing. Okay, people have been proposing that, but the key point is this is the most intensive numerically computationally intensive part for the DMFT calculation. And the reason is because we are actually solving a many body problem. It's not potential scattering problem. So if for the for the KKR, the, the impurity will not be a four operator term, it will still be a two operator term. So do you think that the CTQMC is still the industry standard at the moment for, for bigger clusters or there are some alternatives? you know, other than the perturbation theory. Is there anything else other than IPT and or and uh, CDQMC to, to, your, to your knowledge? Uh, uh, say it again. Uh, well, we know that there are two impurity solvers now commonly used. One is CTQMC and the other one is IPT. So is there anything else that comes to mind for larger clusters? And of course, you can do NLG, maybe you, you can go up to the um, Otherwise, it pretty much see the It's cutting off. There's a problem with the connection. Something is cutting see, off. But for the problem, you I, uh, Kami, we, we, we lost uh, what you just say. Uh, I think there's some connection problem with 
with your sound system. Okay, is that with the microphone? Is that back? Is that back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's better now. Yeah, just say what you. Okay. Say. Yeah, just try to repeat what 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 you want to say uh, about. Okay, so uh, yeah. So uh, that's CTQMC for normally if you do just you do the single band hub model that you do will use the weak copy CTQMC. For the multi-orbital DMFT, normally you prefer to use a strong coupling hybridization expansion CDQMC, especially the interaction is not just only local Hubble U, let's say you're a J, um, then the strong coupling CDQMC would be usually better. Uh, of course, you can do the NLG and it probably limits the three orbitals. Um, what else? Well, obviously they're DMLG. I'm not keeping that up what the the latest uh, study using the DMLG. Their proposal and 10 supporters day, which is related to DMLG. Um, their proposal using machine learning. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people have done the multi-orbital case. Uh, their more fancy thing, they propose to use common computer to solve the impurity problem, but I don't think they solve mm -hmm. the multi. They even the trouble testing, uh, well, testing the classical computer is a common computer. I don't think people have done the multi orbital case. So basically, we are stuck with the CDQMC mostly yeah. for numerical accurate solution or semi analytic solution. You can use the IPT, which was seem has done some work on the IPT for the multi-orbital case. And you can always use the live perturbation and maybe Hubble one approximations, such kind of things. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes, the bottom line is we don't have a perfect solution for it. Okay, um, so um, DFT, so basically, um, the DFT is we try. I try to solve the uh, Hamiltonian in a general Hamiltonian in the continuum space. Um, it's based on two theorem by Hong and Bo and Kong. Basically, the ground state energy is a functional of a density, and what we need to find the ground state equivalent uh, to of a many body problem can be equivalent written as a single body problem. Because the ground state energy is directly related to the to the density. So because the single impurity the single uh, body problem, then you can write it as a uh, pretty much a single body, uh, single particle. Schrodinger equation, which is a constant equation, and try to find the um, potential self consistency with respect to the charge density. Of course, um, there are a lot of technicality on actual implementation. For example, what the basis you can write this equation, uh, how you treat the core electrons, or you, you treat it as a full potential, not going to go through all of them here, but just have the idea is. I solve the single particle basis and then I get the eigenfunction and eigenvalue of a effective single particle case for the many body problem. Okay, so this is the uh, algorithm of DFT. The idea is simple, of course, the implementation is much more complicated than that. So I get the potential, which include the external ionic potential, the hot tree potential, which is the Coulomb, and also the exchange correlation potential as a function of density. Then we'll, we'll fit it into the Kongsham equation, pretty much a single body, uh, Schrodinger equation, single particle Schrodinger equation. And then you find the charge density wall here. Sorry, I, I mix the wall and N, but I mean the same thing, okay. Um, you fit, find the charge density and fit it back to the potential and go, solve the Kongsham equation again until the uh, density is converged. And then you can find the Kongsham orbital and the uh, uh, corresponding eigen energy. That's one way to do it, of course. You can use the KK multiple scattering. 
method instead of calculating green instead of calculating wave function and the energy you can calculate a green function directly so the goal is try to solve it single particle so the goal is try to solve this single particle uh equation So DFT, I'm summarizing here. DFT is the most successful theory and accurate effective single particle theory. The pros are very versatile and can be used from molecule to solid, pretty much anything. Um, and the con is you need to find the extreme correlation functional, which is generally unknown. And LDA and even GGO may not give you a very good uh, functional for strong coupling or strong non-local correlation. The standard example is when it was false. Uh, the strong coupling is uh, the electron, for example, on the D band or F band. So that's something DFT is not perfect. So that's why the DMFT come to a skill. DMFT is the most successful and accurate effective single site. Instead of single part, in that single particle DMFT is a many particle single site theory which is a very good approximation from weak to strong coupling. And the cone is single particle basis without the method. So it's not a first principle calculation. So no spatial resolution is a cross screen the field with only one side. Of course, you can improve the spatial resolution by doing the dynamic cluster approximation I talked about, but I will stick with the DMFT uh, in this presentation. So why we want to combine this because we want to uh, improve some of this advantage of DFT by the DMFT. So the purpose of DMFT plus DMFT, you try to use the DMFT to improve the DFT result, mix them for strong coupling. That's the motivation of doing the DFT plus DMFT. And what the core idea of doing this is to connect the basis of these two methods. Why the downvoting, well, I mean, the downvoting is go from the DFT to the DMFT. And the upvoting is go from the DMFT back to the DMF to DFT. So pretty much for the next few slides, I will elaborate what the DF how how to make this connection, how to do a downvoting and upvoting. Any question here? No. So far, so good. <laughs> no question. Okay. Uh, so. Let's say I start from the DFT. I starting from the cone sum orbital from the DFT. I already solved the cone sum equation, so I get the DFT orbital. I within the psi with a momentum index with a band index. Um, it depends on how you solve the the cone sum equation. The toe will live in different bases. For example, if you do a wind 2K, it will be LAPW, linear or man depend wave. And if you do the VOPs or other uh, pseudo potential method that we need, for example, usually they use a projector or man wave. So, some kind, there's a different way to do the basis. But the bottom line is we, we want to find a conscious orbital from the, from the, yeah. of course, also the energy. And for the DMFT, <laughs> The DMFT work in the local orbital. For example, the Hubble model I talk about basically it's the one near orbital on the on the lattice. So I have the so I have the um the 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 uh index for the position out here and M is for the case of the multi orbital. So M is orbital in that R is a position index. And it could be in, so for the local orbital, and one of the, the option is try to use the maximum local warning function, which I'm not going to elaborate in detail here, but some guy, there are different way to do this. Uh, you can project it to, to the atomic orbital, and it's another option, but bottom line is I want to find the best local <laughs> orbital I want, to, I want to work for the DMFT. Uh, Carmine, I have a question. When you talk about local orbital, that local orbital is uh, it's not the block uh, block wave function. It's it just the basis of the block wave. Yeah, yes, yes. It's a local orbital, okay. Yes. 
Uh, okay, so now assume that I already solved the cone sum equations. What, what I can calculate is calculate the green function. Well, of course, if you do the KKL, it directly gives you the green functions. But let's say I solve the, I use the pan wave method to solve the Schrodinger equation by diagonalizations. So what I would need to do is try to construct the green function based on these relations. There's a green function with the momentum dependency and with the band index, alpha and alpha pi are the band index. So assuming that we want, we want to improve this green function by including a self energy. I don't tell you how we get the self energy for now, but assume we know the self energy, we can add the self energy correction. Basically we stuck the self energy here uh, to calculate the green functions. Now the sigma here is still unknown at the moment, but assume that sigma also is a K dependence uh, as, as the Kongsham Hamiltonian. This is what we try. This is the goal of doing the DFT plus DMFT. Try to calculate, try to do the best approximation for the self energy. So if you, if you do this downfolding, what is your typical number of orbitals that you keep per atom? Yeah, well, that I'm going to talk about a little bit in the next few slide. Uh, uh, um, so what is this? What's, what is the omega n again? Uh, what is this omega? Uh, frequency, frequency, mass power of frequency. A mass power of frequency. Uh, yes. Alpha is the uh, 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 band index. The band index, yes, yes. Okay, so in KKR, we don't have, we don't calculate band structure. So we don't have band index, um, but we have a different index called uh, the, the angular momentum index, L. Orbital, yeah, that, that orbital will be. Index, yeah. yeah, orbital index, yes. Okay. I okay. thought that so, alpha and alpha prime was the, was the uh, orbital index in the sense that this is a tight binding model now, right? Isn't this a tight binding model after you do the downfolding? Yes. Um, yes, I just, well, we, ideally you want it to be a tight binding model. Yes, depending on how you construct the, construct the local orbital. Well, well, no matter how you construct it, if you have a finite number of orbitals, so alpha goes from one to five, then this is a five by five matrix, right? This is a, just a yeah, yeah. Binary model with five bands, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you consider spin, it will be it can be ten by ten for the sure. No, I mean, okay, fine. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. I have a quick question also here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we we started from the plane wave based uh, TFT most of the time in in their talk here. So uh, like in many chemists like to use this uh, cheat, uh, linear as combination of Gaussian. Yeah, like the Gaussian of the, yeah. Yeah, so will it work the same way or we have to use different scheme for that? Because... Um, I haven't thought about this. Uh, okay. So I don't know exactly the answer. Yeah, because chemists like to have, you know, like yeah, atomistic know that, yeah. view, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Aren't you going to basically find uh, these? Uh, uh, how are you going to find these downfolded uh, uh, orbitals? I mean, uh, do, doing some type of uh, Vanier construction or so, and you should be able to do that also in, in basically in any basis you choose. Um. I don't know the application in chemistry, so I, I think it can be done. I, I don't know. Not sure. But I think, Yang, you're right. This is an important issue that I think pop up early on in the sense that if you take a single band and if you construct the Vanier orbitals in a standard way, these are very large and have no atomic character at all. So if you put a U in such a gigantic orbital, that's very misleading because the real interaction U is atomic. So yeah. I think if one take many bands, then you can localize many orbitals more and they acquire more atomic character. But this is not an issue, you know, between the number of orbitals. This is why I asked the question, how many orbitals? If we put 10 orbitals per atom, sure, we can make them atomic-like. But if we only have one, then this is actually not a very atomic orbital at all. And then putting you in that Hubble well, model is, is iffy. Well, right? there, there, the two pop.
favorite way to construct the local orbital, one of them is maximally localized Warnier function. Yes. The other is projected to the atomic orbital, let's say projected uh -huh. T2G and EG orbital. That's why you a lot of K end up with three orbital K is because you project the T2G and E2G orbitals. Okay, and then so that, we that, actually that, would be, that would be very e easy to then uh, connect to uh, 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 chemistry basis sets, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so maximally localized Weiner function has been constructed for the molecules, like water molecule and all this stuff. Okay. But I am not aware of somebody has done that molecular DFT plus DMFT. So yeah, I, you can construct Weiner function Maybe. for the molecules. It's standard. It's already available. Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure how successful this will be for uh, chemistry questions. I, I mean, uh, uh, probably chem in, in chemistry, you'd uh, go straight uh, to uh, uh, higher order uh, theory like Yeah, like CI. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's unreasonable because you know that Walter Kohn got the Nobel Prize precisely because they applied DFT to chemists, to big molecules. <laughs> so obviously, you know, the, even DFT works reasonably well in certain classes of molecules and there should be an intermediate class where the DMFT correction yeah. should do what you want. I mean, they are probably, if you really well, want what, the decimal well, figures, then. Well, somebody, somebody will do the case without actually done for them. Let's say if you do a very simple approximation for the impurity problem, you do second order perturbation or half of one. Sometimes you don't need to do the done folding. You can do, do all the orbital you have. If your your impurity solver for the DMFD is going to be simple enough, so I don't know how to do. At least I have no experience on how it can be done in the molecule. Say because the orbital are already local in molecule. Let's say you start from a Gaussian basis; it's a very local orbital already. Um, so I don't know how the downfolding could be done. Could okay. probably have done it, but I I don't I don't know about that. Okay. Um. No more question. Let me move on. So the goal is try to find the self energy. Okay. So first thing we do is we try to down for the DFD green function to the local green function. How can we do it? So we have the DFT green function with the GK on the right hand side here. So what I do is try to do the projections from the um, Kongshan orbital basis, which is given by psi K alpha here, to the local basis, which is given by phi RM here. So you do this projection, you will go uh, green functions with uh, orbital index, let's say MM pi. So this is what the downfolding done. I assume that here I, I don't talk about in how to how to construct the local orbital. I assume you know the local orbital already. Okay, so then we have the local green function. Think about the DMFG. The local green function can be used as the bar green function. So what we need to do next is try to solve the local DMFT equation. Assume that we know the value of local Coulomb in action and maybe the exchange J too. So those value can obtained by either some approximation like constraint RPA or directly fitting the experimental data. Then the next step, of course, we have the bath green function. We have the local green function, the local green function can be can be fit as a bath green function that we solve the impurity problem. The impurity problem with local green function and the interaction can be solved by, for example, the upper one, you can do machine fancy machine learning or even a quantum computing um, for approximate impurity green function. And this is the impurity green function written in the local basis. We have the impurity green function local, we can construct the local green function. Just think about the DMFT equation we talk about. This is exactly the same DMFT 
equation we talked about at the beginning. So we get the impurity green from impurity local self energy. We get the impurity local self energy. The next thing to do, we want to construct the self energy with momentum dependency, the constant orbital basis. So what we need to do the next step is try to upfold the self energy. So the right hand side of this equation is the local self energy. And I do this, I do this projection um, inverse of the projection. Of course, you cannot really do the inverse of projection. Some information is lost. But you go back to the go back from the local basis to the consum orbital, and you get the self-energy in the consum orbital basis. That's why the self-energy now contain the K in that instead of just local. It also contain the, the uh, band in that alpha and alpha pi. So with this, you can fit it back to the, you can use the relation between the green function and the self-energy and construct the self-energy correct green function, which is what we want. This is originally what we proposed to do is calculate the self-energy. Now we have self-energy and then we feed back to that relation to find the uh, green functions. Of course, we need to take in account the double counting and how we take in account this is subtracting the self-energy here. There's some correction from double counting. There's uh, two proposal of, of of calculating the double counting, either the fully, um, fully atomic limit or a one mean field approximation. I'm not going to talk about here, but just as you know, there's a double counting between the DFT and DMFT. But that's just a number, right? That that thing is just one number. It, it basically, it's like just a number. That's thing. why it doesn't have the frequent. Right. Yeah, that's why intention. It doesn't have a frequency momentum dependency here. The I'm intention. Why then with that? Can, can we actually think that this is basically just changing your chemical potential, essentially? Like, is that a quite uh, way to think about it? Uh, it depends on the feeling. It depends on the proposal, yes. I mean, this is, you know, in this it equation, it looks like it just add, it adds to the chemical potential. So it's like yeah. a correction to yeah. just a correction to the chemical potential. Yes, but it also depends on U and J. Sure, sure. Yes. And, and how do they people estimate this? Do you know? Well, there are two methods. Um, basically, some mean field approximations. I can talk about, uh, I didn't prepare the slide, but I can talk about it the other time. It's either fully localized limit, they call it fully localized limit, or the other is a one mean field. Basically, both of them are different ways to do some mean field approximations. Well, I can I can feel in the detail of all this thing next time. Um, just just as you know, this is how we subtract the double count and conversions. So, um, we we get the green function here in the uh, constant orbital basis. We want to get better DMFT equation. So what we need to do, we need to do a downfolding again to this green function. So a downfolding again to a green function to get the local green functions. So when we get the local green function, um, we can calculate the bath green function using the equation from the have a local green function, self energy. We get a bath green green function. With that, then we compete the DMFT cycle um, until until you get the converted self-energy. With the converted self-energy, that means you have the converged green function. With the converged green function, you can calculate the charge density. And this is something we're going to fit back to the DFT loop. So Basically, the charge density is just the trace of the green function with respect to the position or the position now. Um, so um, just this is a green function we know because uh, we already converted DMFT. Plug it back to the formula for the density. We calculate this. We get a new density, charge density, and this charge density can be fit back to the Kongsham equations. So what is T? T is a time order? Uh, a temperature, temperature. A temperature, okay. It's a Matsubara sum, right? That's why. 
Ma- yes, Masubawa, yes. The hair green well, from the are retarded, I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then assume the yeah, it's not time already. No, 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 no. Okay, this is Masubawa going from sorry, this Masubawa going function. Yeah. So uh we get the chart density, then the next step, of course, you feedback the chart density. If you if you want to get a cell uh consistent chart density, you feedback the chart density. If you don't want a self-consistent chart density, pretty much this is this is the solution you want to get from the DMFT. But assume we want to do the chart self-consistency, we get the whole hour, we will feedback to the DFT and do the procedure again. So this page basically summarizes the step of the DFT plus DMFT. The first step is the box at the top of this page. You solve the DFT equation to find the constant orbital and corresponding energy. Then with that, you can construct the local orbital basis either by projection to the atomic orbital or procedure to construct the maximum localized one year function. So with the local orbital, you can calculate the local green function by doing the downfolding. The local green function uh, is set to the bath green function for the DMFT calculation. With the bath green function, assume that you know the U and J, you can solve the impurity problem and find the impurity green functions. And once you have the impurity local green function, you can construct the self-energy via the Dyson equation. This is local self-energy now. When you have the local self-energy, you need to do the upfolding to calculate the, the, the self-energy in the Kongsham orbital basis. And when you have the self-energy Kongsham orbital basis, then you calculate the, um, the green function with the self-energy corrections. So you try to converge this DMFT box for the converted uh, for the converted self energy. When you have the converted self energy, that means you get the converted green function, and you get a new charge density. And the charge density fit back to the DFT equation again, and you can repeat the procedure. This is basically the. Uh, this is basically the the idea of DFT but plus DMFT. So the main difficulty is first of all how to construct the local orbital basis. This is this is a separate issue by itself, and the other is how to find the value of u and j. Um, the other one is how to uh, how to deal with the double counting issue. Uh, basically, this is the three main issue in order to combine the DFT to DMFT. And this is due to the fact that DFT and the DMFT are not working in the same basis. And the basis of DMFT is much smaller. You want the basis to be as local as possible. That's also related to the impurity solver. If your interaction is not very local, the Monte Carlo simulation, the quantum Monte Carlo simulation tend to have more than my stronger minus side problem. So you further limit your calculation. Um, so basically that's the idea of DFT, DMFT. I can fill in the detail of this issue if you are interested um, in the future talks. Uh, that's all I have. Question. Yeah, is this, I just want to clarify because I was confused. Is this upfold of the self energy and fine green function in conscient basis orbitals? Is this done after you convert the MFT loop? Um, you do it, no, you do it in every step. I'm sorry. I, I should have a, I should have a, have a, I should have a wetter to arrow from here, from here to here. Okay. Okay. So it's done, it's still done in the MFT loop. And do you know? Yeah, it's still in the DMFT loop. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. And is do you know if people do this uh, full charge self consistency or they do just one uh, DFT? Short? Yeah, people have done full charge self consistency. Okay. Yes, it's yeah. it's already implemented like in tricks and uh, another code like. Yeah. 
uh, uh, come in. Uh, this yeah. is local. Okay, this local uh, basis uh, is yeah. kind of arbitrary. Is there like a particular requirement for DMFT to say you? I just want um, it only works for this particular the idea. Uh, you want after you do find the local basis, you want the interaction to be as as diagonal as possible. Yeah. So you want if the interaction of off diagonal elements, it will be a burden for the quantum Monte Carlo solver. Yeah, for any solver. Like let's say if you do the maximum local Warnia function, you can sometimes people try to rotate the rotate the axis to make the interaction matrix as as diagonal as possible. So yes, there are some degree of freedom and some kind of upness there. So let's say that's what one of the thing way cool fun is he can just use the projection to the local atomic orbital um, instead of doing the maximum local volume function. Okay. Uh, the the so, reason I want to raise this question is like for KKR, I think we just, if you have the freedom to, for the local orbitals, uh, it's, I think in KKR, we don't need to do a download, downfolding anymore. Because in KKR already, yes, yes, that's the point. Yes, so basically, if you do KKR, the difference is you don't have that downfolding step because you already get the green function. Yes, uh, um, but you you still so, have to be in. Uh, you you want to be. Uh, still have to do some transformation to connect to your impurity yeah. solver. Yes, yes, because again, solver. depend. Depend on how large your basis is. Okay, if you don't have many orbital and the solver is a simple enough solver, let's say your perturbation solver, then you can keep all the orbital together. Then you can bypass the downfolding and upfolding step. If you just want to test it out at the beginning, of course, if you want to do a quantum Monte Carlo solver, then you, as as we talk about, your practical limit to three orbitals or maybe five orbitals. In certain circumstances. So yeah, so like uh, in KKR, uh, we can calculate this uh, multiple scattering path operator, and from there we can calculate Green's function, and we can supply that Green's function to the DMFT. So like, instead of when we are doing LDA plus DMFT, we are constructing first Hamiltonian, and we are putting that Hamiltonian in the uh, bare Green's function. But in the KKR, we can get the Green's function from the that path operator, I guess. Oh yes, but um, but uh, the the thing is, so so we can get the Green's function, but uh, the Green's function we'll get will be in uh, in the uh, multiple scattering form. That is, uh, it will be expressed in um, in real space uh, in it real or, or, or um, um, in reciprocal space, but definitely in, in terms of uh, L uh, and LM expansion and uh, the uh, thing is we will have to have uh, also be able to uh, relate to um, the impurity problem and especially we'll have to somehow express uh, then the uh, uh, U and uh, J's and the Im impurity problem in, in such a way that it is, uh, or the Green's function that we connect to in such a way that it is comp compatible with the impurity problem. Uh, I mean, it's a similar problem. I, if, if you remember, uh, uh, Young, the local sake that uh, Walter Tammerman and uh, Martin Ludus did. How how do you do a sick in um, uh, in KKR? Yeah, sick sick stands for uh, self interaction correction. Uh, yeah, uh, oh. they have similar uh, requirement. Uh, I think uh, one thing I want to point out uh, for the KKR, the, uh, we have a, a local Green's function, and that Green's function can be de decomposed into different orbitals, and so we can have uh, we can see the effect of uh, say if we want to do. Uh, safe energy uh, only applies to like F orbitals, right? It can you, probably we don't have to do that for all the other like S orbitals. We'd only focus on like F orbitals. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, that could be. That's the point. That they don't, 
I think only orbitals which are close to half filling are affected much by interactions, right? The self-energy in other orbitals is very small, negligible. That's what you're saying here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also we can, uh, our Green's fine can be expressed in the case space as well, uh, because our tall matrix uh, has a, we do have an expression for <laughs> case, uh, case dependent, uh, yeah, Green's function. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sounds like very promising. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more natural to, to work with KKR in certain sense. It, it, it's, uh, I mean, uh, certainly if, if you look at <clears throat> this whole formula as, as you pre presented it, uh, it is a very natural uh, connection be because, I mean, you're staying basically in, in a uh, Green's function language the whole time. Uh, there, but again, I'm worried there are some sort of technical technicalities in, in the detail. Um, well, you should ask the Wu to talk about it. Actually. Exactly. That that was what I was going to right. say. We, right. we need to right. get Li Wu right. to explain us because he uh, already did this together with um, uh, Hubert at uh, one point. Uh, Right, right. He, he's mostly using KKR, as I understand, yeah. right, for the DFT part, right. So, 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 so this issue has been, I guess, studied quite a bit, I think, by that. Yeah, by I, see, that I think he did this uh, RMTO, right? He started with RMTO, but it's a it's a kind of linearized version of KKR. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I guess the, the, some some other time in the future, we and Marcus and I will talk about KKR. So we, we present the problem. We present how. Uh, you know, in our language, how this is done, and then we can figure out, make these connections. And we're going to talk about KKI and the tall matrix screens function. Um, yeah. Now we might be able to, you know, figure out <laughs> a, a, a best approach. Wow. Okay. So, wow. I hope this talk they give you some idea of how the DFD and plus DMFD work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coming, uh, this uh, algorithm that you have up there on the screen, it seems to be specific to a single site, the MFT, where you have one atom per. Yeah, you know, yeah, per yeah. Unit. Uh, if you want to do clusters, uh, there was a there was a, a, a cluster momentum index that you introduced. Yes, yes. And that uh, how that would fit into uh, in uh, how that can interface with DFT is not at all clear, at least to me. Uh, has there been work done on clusters there within? Is, there is so. people try to do the uh, CDMFT and DCA. I think I think there is. Um, Tonus three has I, done I'm a lot not, of work on that. I'm not familiar with them, so I, I don't want to say too much. But there is people try to combine it with DCA and the CDMFT. I don't with, think with I DFT. Any, with the together DFT, with yes. DFT. Yes, uh -huh, with I the see. DFT. Well. Uh, you, you know what's actually? I think actually it would. I I, uh, I have never. I haven't. I I have minimum exposure myself to DCA. I know how it works in principle. But there was one but, issue that is actually confusing, that the, you know this this momentum index is discrete. So they my understanding is that DCA partitions the Brillouin zone into domains, and then yes. the self energy is assumed to be constant in each domain. But I vaguely yes. remember that Milis and uh, uh, and maybe some other people like maybe. Thomas Meyer or someone else, they they said that uh, well you could imagine you know that the self energy in principle is a smooth function of momentum. Oh yeah, it's called DCA plus. Um, so what is the status? Do you know what is the status of this? Maybe maybe that should be a topic of another of another discussion. Or, and or so what he tried to do maybe five years ago is called DCA uh, plus. So he tried to um, have a smooth self energy as a function of k instead of patches of k right. uh, but i think there's some problem of i believe it related to causality um uh -huh. so for it worked for certain range of parameter but uh -huh. not so well in some regime i think they have a recent paper last year or very recent uh -huh. paper and they found the problem so they basically suggest that may not be a very good method to find a smooth self energy. So what they propose to do now is actually 
I just do the patches DCA, but interpolate the self energy after the patches self energy are converged. I see. So, you know, this is the confusing little bit because when on your slide right here, the self energy acquires a momentum dependence, but that momentum dependence comes from the projection entirely, right? Not the, the original yes, here, yes, self energy. Here, right. So, so, yes. so there are actually several sources of momentum dependence and Yes. And uh, it's a little bit confusing. And because, you know, I, I know that, for example, you know, uh, if you do or in the real space, like Cotillard did Acceler DMFT, then they do something which is called periodization, which is another ad hoc step to basically kind of interpolate the self energy in the brilliant zone. Yes. But I, I'm, I haven't really followed up on how well behaved are these different methods to, you know, to, uh, yeah, that there, there, there's some problem of the interpolation scheme. I, I, yeah, you can you can try to look up the recent paper. They talk about it in quite detail. Mm. But so, so is your vision right now that my, my impression is that most, there's a lot of work done on DM, DFT plus single side DMFT. Yes. Maybe there are a few papers where, where you do more than one site, yes. more than one atom. That is this my, something that you feel is realistic in the in the next few years my, or? This is far in the future to do. My impression is there a compromise because let's say one you can see them more than single impurity because the model you downfold at least will be three orbitals, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to have a single orb downfold to single orbital. So you have three orbital case, even you have a two impurities, solving it by quantum Monte Carlo is already very, very challenging for a reasonably small temperature. Mm -hmm. So there's a compromise on how many number of impurity you can solve. Or of course mm -hmm. you can use the more easy to implement, easy to calculate impurity solver like perturbation or IPT. Well, IPT won't work for multiple sites too well anyway but you can use other impurity solver, but try to use a quantum Monte Carlo solver with many orbital and many impurity. Mm -hmm. That will never be solved because it's not about the algorithm, it's about the fundamental minor sign problem. Right. And it goes exponentially you know, worse as the number of orbital and impurity goes. Right. So but I could imagine that, you know, if you, if you, you know, you yes. do the downfolding, uh, well, yes. after you do the downfolding, you could do cluster what is the yes. problem is to close this charge soft consistency loop. That would be a problem. But yes. it could be that there are many situations where, where the basically the downfolded Hamiltonian is not really changing so dramatically with pressure, temperature. I don't know what. So so basically, it could be that you know, for some purposes, you really don't need to close the charge soft consistency loop. And so the question is, you know, when and where is this so crucial? Because that's the huge overburden on numerics, right? Yes. So what's your feeling on this? I mean, how wow. how important it is in general? When when is it so important to close that charge self consistency? Well, it always depends what 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 system you try to solve. Right? Some of them mm -hmm. you can get less charge self consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends. It's hard to say for sure. For uh, for example, like some charge insulator like nickel oxide, it found to yeah. be extremely important there. Yeah. You think this is really not known, kind of, you know, if you ask people, uh, you know, across the board, when do we have to do this? Because it's a huge task, right? So this is not completely understood, I thought, or it is, or, you know, I don't have a good feeling about this, but I think it's an important thing to know about before you decide to de develop. Or, like, for example, if you wanted to do, uh, you know, disorder, we need, we've seen, we need bigger supercells, we need more atoms. Yes. We, we need, uh, e even if you do TMT, the typical medium, yes. you need to go to clusters. So, you know, uh, for many purposes, e e there are some uh, situations where it's difficult to avoid cluster type of corrections. Yes. And doing them together with DFT, it's completely with full self-consistency, that seems completely out of reach at the moment, it seems to me at least, right? Yeah, I think it would be difficult. Okay. Yeah, but don't, well, I would say, don't expect that if you, it, it would be easy to generalize it to the many impurity case. I think the hope is very, uh, it's somewhat unrealistic if we want to solve it by quantum Monte Carlo. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm going. Okay. Well, I leave I leave a lot of question open. So uh, if you want me to fill in some of the gap, I can do it in the future. I think you have one more slide, right? Uh, I don't think I think the empty slide. No, no, that's all. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, okay. I tried to I tried to write I tried to write the slide of how to do that double counting. Okay. But I gave up because it's five a.m. in the morning. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we'd like to hear more about the double counting and also yeah, DCA. Next time, in the future, somebody has to talk about DCA. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are interested in how this uh, this case base, a uh, case base, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, cost granting uh, is yeah. how that that worked with this. Next uh, time, well, probably not next week. I can talk about how to estimate the U and J by constraint RPA. Yeah. Yeah, I can also talk right. about a double counting in more detail. So uh, maybe next week that uh, is a Vlad. I'm gonna give a talk. Uh, so you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I can. Uh, on the other hand, if 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 Camille wants to continue, maybe you know, it's uh, better to not to constantly.